The Northwest Arkansas Naturals are in town to open a three-game series with the Frisco Rough Riders. Joining us tonight on the Rough Riders pregame show is infield and base running coordinator Casey Candell. Casey enjoyed a very extensive professional career as a player himself. Now he's a member of the Texas Rangers farm system. And Casey, there's both an offensive and a defensive aspect to your position and, and as far as your job, the things that you look for and the feedback that you give players. When you visit an affiliate, uh, what is your primary objective? Um, just see that uh, you know each individual guy is kind of doing the things that you know he's been designated to do to get himself better in his pregame routine, and then also you know watching the games and and seeing if there's anything to pick up you know and they're getting ready and and reaction to the ball and and uh, their setup and and how they're going about actually getting ready to field balls on the on the base running side. It's you know just making sure guys are running balls out, getting good turns, um, watch their their jumps at first base on steals, you know, if they're coming up out of their out of their stance and and kind of limiting their ability to get to second base as fast as they can, you know, what kind of jumps they're getting off the pitcher, um, their footwork and um, you know, basically, you know, the decisions they make and want to want to kind of make sure they're staying aggressive on balls in the dirt and and thinking about going from first to third, you know, because we want to be good at, at those things. From a base running perspective, uh, what things are you, what kind of feedback are you trying to give players? Uh, because a hitting coordinator, that's straightforward. A pitching coordinator, same thing. But when it comes to base running, what are some pointers that you give players on how they can improve? Well, just, you know, base running is basically kind of making sure you stay aggressive, getting getting a nice, a good lead where you're comfortable at first base, where it's not too short where you're not going to be able to go first to third on a base hit. Um, you know, actually kind of thinking ahead of the situation of the game and what you're trying to what you're trying to accomplish, getting a good secondary lead and kind of reacting to the ball when it's hit. You look for those kind of things because, because you know, the, the difference between out being out and safe in base running can be, you know, minute seconds, you know, just minuscule amounts of time and you know, those are all based on the kind of jump you get when the ball is hit. You know, the aggressiveness is in which you, you take your first couple steps on the base paths and your awareness as to where people are playing on the field. I mean, those are all things that, that you know, go into being a good base runner. And really, you don't have to be the fastest guy to be a good base runner. You have to have, to have good instincts on the bases and be able to read the ball off the bat well and make good good uh, decisions so I mean those are the things that that I look for and what they're doing if they're doing that right I mean I can kind of see when they're out there if they're really concentrating on on base running and getting a good jump and getting a good lead and so kind of just kind of make sure they're doing those things correctly this team this year the 2014 Rough Riders doesn't steal a whole heck of a lot and you've been at this position for four years now it seems to be a bit of a departure from previous manager Steve Bouchelle who put the steal signal on a lot it seemed yeah, I'm not really concerned about, I mean, if you look around, you know, at particular players and you think about, like, you know, who is a true base dealer, you know, you, you kind of, that, that limits the number. And, and the thing is, is that if a guy, if, if they run and they're getting thrown out half the time, that's not really, you know, conducive to, to helping your team. So, so I think Jason Wood has done a great job of understanding the type of players that he has and and going from there and, and kind of kind of developing, you know, a, a, an offense that is based on running the base as well, you know, maybe extra base hits and, and, you know, getting the opportune times to steal bases and doing it in, in big times in games. Because, I mean, just going out and running at running randomly, at, you know, is not really, that's not really how you learn how to run the bases. It's just, you know, it's kind of picking your spots, picking your pitches. And I think, you know, with the players that are here in the past, and I don't know if it was, it was Boo or 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 not, but you know, he had players that that could run run, and he probably had a more more um, suited players to be able to steal more bases. So I think I think that's what you look at, not necessarily how many bases they're stealing, but who's stealing them and when they're stealing them, and and how are they running the bases overall. We're with Casey Candell. He's the infield and base running coordinator for the Texas Rangers farm system. This visit in particular, Casey, what sort of things have you been working on and, and who, name some of the players that you've specifically sat down and talked with? Well, I just got here yesterday and, and um, watched 
you know, Joey Gallo, and we just needed to work on a little bit of his his setup and his reaction to balls being hit, which is all, you know, kind of in tune with how well you're going to field the ball. I mean, you know, good good fielders get good hops because they react to the ball quickly and they're ready to field the ball. So I think that um, when I saw him in Myrtle Beach, his setup was a little different and his ready position was a little different. So, I mean, you just have to, with the young players, you just have to drive that home and make sure they they doing it every pitch. It's sometimes a, a hard thing to accomplish, but once they get back into that groove, you know, the, the, the fielding usually gets better. Um, so that was, we worked on that today about kind of getting his feet moving and getting better jumps on balls and reacting so that he can get himself in a better position to field the ball. Have you ever worked with a third baseman as large in stature as Gallo, and what kind of challenges does that pose to a guy who's trying to master the hot corner? Um, it's just basically, uh, you know, getting him down in his legs and getting him in a position where he's able to field the ball. I mean, I mean, his his... His success is predicated on him using his legs to get down and field the ball. You field, you field with, with your legs anyway. I mean, it, that, that dictates whether you're going to have good hands or not is how well you use your feet and your legs. So, so, I mean, him staying down and getting down with the ball is very, very large with somebody, you know, of his stature. So he's got to really concentrate on, on being down there with the ball and getting into his legs and staying in his legs after he fields the ball on the throw. So those are always concerns with him, and, and he has done a good job for the most part. I mean, I think, you know, he's going through a little lull here, and just seeing him yesterday, you know, we just got to get back into that. So he's very capable of being a, a, an outstanding fielder at third base. The Rough Riders' middle infield at the beginning of the season, which of course featured Rugnet Odor and Luis Sardinas, was gutted in about early May when those two players earned a promotion to Arlington. And then along comes Odubel Herrera, who appears to be a much improved player defensively this season. No errors in 36 games at AA in 2014. Really seems to be letting the game come to him. What are some things that he does really well as a fielder? Well, now that you mention he has no errors, he'll definitely make one tonight. That'll be that's that's the baseball gods. But that's okay. Um, he's been playing well. He's just basically kind of doing the things that, that he's been working on the last couple of years, and, and they're, they're starting, tar- starting to stick, and he's kind of taking it out there and, and um, you know, reacting to the ball real well, getting himself in good position, attacking the ball much better than he has, not waiting on it. And I think that is, you know, translated into him being a little smoother out there. He's he's worked the last couple of years on improving his double play turn, which has been become – you know, a, a vast improvement from, from the past. So, you know, those things, it's all about, you know, doing the same thing over and over again and sticking with it and not, not losing focus when you're in a game. I mean, those are the kind of, I mean, everybody makes physical errors, but a lot of physical errors in the infield are based on your mental approach to fielding. So if you're, if you're locked in, concentrating and focused mentally and you're doing the right things, It usually gets you in in good position to make the routine play and get in a good position to field the ball. So I think he's doing that more consistently, which has led to him being a more consistent infielder. It's funny that you mentioned the errorless streak because he mentioned to me that his teammates are telling him about it on a frequent basis now because he has gone so many games without committing an error. And I'm sure that's something as a fielder yourself in the majors that you can relate to. You probably don't want to hear about that sort of thing as a fielder trying to keep a perfect record well you know Odubel if they're mentioning it to him every day maybe he responds to that much better so they need to keep mentioning it since it's working so so uh you know that's that's perfect it, just whatever the plan is just stick with it and then you know hopefully he carries it out so I mean obviously you know if he goes the rest of the season without committing an error it would be quite spectacular but you know what he's he's on a good streak and it can happen it's happened before so you know if he goes out and does the thing that he needs to do and and they keep mentioning that to him, then, then that'd be awesome. It'd be great. <laughs> We're with Casey Candell, roving, roving instructor here on the Frisco Rough Riders pregame show. As a player yourself, Casey, you played every position but catcher. Who do you think has taken the biggest step forward this year defensively? Outstanding Odubel Herrera because we were just talking about him. Well, uh, when I saw Joey Gallo in Myrtle Beach, he had he had transformed to a very a very good fielder. And like I said, when I, I got here, and he kind of reverted back to some stuff he was doing in the past. But that being said, when he was in Myrtle Beach, I saw the capability that he had to be a very good fielder. Now, 
my job is while I'm here is to get him back into that groove of he felt in Myrtle Beach and and how he was in position to field balls and the reaction time and the range that he had there which was outstanding so I think you know maybe you know that that little little dog days of the summer right now and just kind of got to refocus on what he he has to do defensively and and get back into that groove of, of feeling comfortable and reacting well out there